This video shows students how to set up a Python programming environment on their Mac computer. Uh, you should begin by installing Python. So you can just go to python.org, uh, go to downloads, and you want, probably want to download the most recent version of Python. Um, and that will download an installer and you just double click on the installer and it'll install Python for you. So I'm not going to bother uh, showing you how to do that. Once you've got Python installed, um, you can check uh, to see which versions of Python are installed on your computer. So you want to open up a terminal on your Mac, uh, and then you want to type Python in the terminal and then press the tab key. And so you, uh, you can then see all of the programs um, on your computer uh, that begin with the word Python. So you can see there's a Python 2, uh, there's a Python 2.7, a Python 3, and a Python 3.9. Uh, so it looks like there's four different versions of Python installed on this computer. It's actually not the case. Um, if you delete Python and type which Python 3, you'll see that in fact it is version 3.9. Uh, so when you type Python 3, you actually get the uh, Python 3.9 version of Python. Um, and so now that you're uh, now that Python's installed, uh, you can go to the course to the textbook webpage uh, for the Mac. Um, uh, for the Mac instructions for installing Python and, and the uh, libraries that you need. Um, so the uh, textbook recommends 3.6.5, but that's just because of when the textbook was, uh, when this webpage was last updated. You should install Python 3.9. Um, if you have a brand new Mac, so that is one that uses the uh, M1 chipset, uh, you have to install Python 3.9, otherwise you will have a hard time installing NumPy and Pygame. Uh, once you've got, um, once you're sure that Python 3 is installed uh, on your computer, you can go ahead and type in these two commands into your terminal. Uh, and these will install a couple of libraries uh, that are used in some of the textbook um, exercises and chapters. Um, I've actually already installed them, but I'm just going to uh, type it again. So make sure it's Python 3. Uh, you type Python 3. And this is going to say that it's already installed, right? So requirement already up to date. Uh, once you've got that installed, once you have NumPy installed, you can uh, install Pygame. And that's fine too. Again, this is a brand new computer using uh, the latest um, ARM chipset. Uh, so if any computer is going to have trouble installing these two libraries, it's going to be this one. Uh, with Python 3.9 installed, everything's fine. Um, from what I've read on the internet, if you have an earlier version of Python, uh, you may have a hard time installing those libraries on this particular uh, chipset. If you have a Mac, uh, a slightly older Mac with an Intel chipset, sorry, with an Intel chipset, everything should be fine. Uh, you can then follow the instructions here to check uh, if the libraries have been installed correctly. So the way you do that is you just run Python and then you just import the libraries. So if you import NumPy, you shouldn't get an error message. If you import Pygame, you shouldn't get an error message uh, and everything's fine. So everything seems to be uh, installed correctly here. We can exit the interpreter by typing exit uh, with a pair of parentheses and I'm back in the terminal. Okay, uh, the next step then is installing the libraries that the textbook uses. Uh, so you want to click on this link here, and then you want to save the file. Uh, after you download, uh, the standard location uh, that this saves to is your downloads folder. Um, so right, the co command pwd is print working directory. So if I press enter there, um, it tells you that uh, my shell is currently running in users Burton documents. Um, your shell is probably running in users, whatever your name is. Um, so I need to navigate to the downloads directory. So if I type CD, CD is change directory. Uh, if there's nothing after CD, it will change to your, what's called your home directory. And you can see that your home directory is uh, users um, slash whatever your name is. Uh, so mine's users Burton. Uh, your downloads directory is inside of this directory. So if I type cd downloads, uh, I'll be in the downloads directory. Right, users Burton downloads. And 
the command ls, so little ls, will list the contents of your directory. Uh, and you can see the zip file um, is uh, in the downloads directory. Uh, I then need to extract the zip file. So I can do that from the command prompt too. It's just unzip, followed by the name of the file. So I'm gonna type in the first letter or two of the name of intro cs uh, 1.0.zip and just press the tab key. So your uh, shell has tab com what's called tab completion. Um, so if you type in a file name, um, or you type in the start of a file name and press tab, uh, then the uh, shell will try to do its best to complete the rest of the file name. Right. So again, um, if I just list the contents of the directory, there's only one file here. So if I want to unzip that one file, I can just type I tab and it will complete uh, the, the rest of the name. Press enter and it will extract the files. Type ls and you'll see that there's now what looks to be either another file um, or folder in this directory. Uh, so if I type ls minus a, that gives me a little more information. Uh, and I can see, in, uh, oh, sorry, there we go, ls minus a l. Uh, I can see that the, that um, thing called intro cs dash 1.0 is in fact another directory or folder. Uh, so I can change into that folder and when you change into that folder, you'll find setup.py. Um, and now you can run the, uh, this command right here. So Python 3, uh, setup.py, install minus minus user. And what that does is it takes the, um, it takes these um, Python files uh, which make up the uh, library, the book site, what, they, what the authors call their book site library, and it copies them into your Python 3.9 uh, library uh, directory. So it knows, uh, so now whenever you run Python 3, um, it knows where to find the book site library files. Okay, so once, you're, once you've done that, you can um, go back to your downloads directory. So dot dot, um, means go up one directory. So I'm now in the downloads directory because I was in the intro CS directory. If I type ls minus al again, uh, I can see these two files. If you want to, you can remove those two files. Um, you can either do it using finder. Uh, you can do it from the command line. I don't really want to show you how to do it from the command line in case you accidentally delete files you shouldn't be deleting. Um, if you want to find out how to do it though, there's lots of resources online where you can look up how to use your shell. Uh, the command to do it will be rm uh, for remove. Uh, but again, uh, you probably don't want to be uh, deleting files from your file system um, unless you're sure you know what you're doing. Um, let's see, so, okay. So I'm going to now check to make sure that I can uh, use the book site library files. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go back to my home directory Right, using CD. Uh, I'm then going to go to my course directory, which I have in documents. So documents, uh, and it's called Sys121. Right, and then I'm going to launch um, the Python uh, IDE from within this directory. Uh, so the Python IDE is called idle. Now I'm going to type idle, then the tab key, and you'll see that there's a bunch of different versions of idle installed. Right, uh, if I type which idle three, you're going to see that it's in fact idle 3.9, right? So to start idle three, uh, so to start the version of idle using Python three, um, you want to type idle three or idle 3.9. So idle three, and then I'm going to type space, and then I'm going to type the ampersand, sorry, the uh, ampersand, the and symbol. Uh, and what that will do is it, it will start the uh, idle three program. Um, but it will uh, let me continue typing commands into the shell, right? So you can see idle has started here and my shell is still responsive, right? So I can, for example, list the contents of this directory and you can see hello world.py is here. Uh, let me close idle and show you what happens if I don't type in the ampersand. So if I don't type the ampersand, uh, idle three starts running 
uh, but the shell is no longer responsive because this process is running um, in the shell or it's been started from the shell. So the shell won't respond to commands until I close uh, idle three, right? And normally when you start a program from the shell, you want to use the shell for other things. So I'm going to close that. This should, uh, well, that should have come. Oh, wait, um, right. Uh, is it gone? Yes, okay, there we go. All right, so uh, let's do that again. Idle three, uh, ampersand, starts up idle. Um, I need to create a new Python file uh, to use the book site library. So let me show you what happens if you try to import um, the uh, book site libraries into the idle shell directly. So if I import standard IO, it's not going to work. The reason it doesn't work is because um, standard IO is using um, some functions uh, that only work in um, a true terminal. Uh, so basically something that looks like this, right? Something that looks like uh, your terminal program. The idle shell is not a true shell. So it's a fake, it, it's actually running a fake terminal. Um, and so the, uh, so some of the um, functions that the standard IO Pi uses uh, won't work in this fake shell. So what you have to do is you have to create a new uh, file. So we're, we're going to create a separate, we're going to create our own standalone Python program instead of typing in commands directly, uh, instead of typing commands directly into the shell. So if I import uh, standard IO over here and then try to use one of the standard IO um, functions like uh, right line. Um, we can, uh, this should work fine. So Python file, save as. Uh, I'm just going to call it uh, test standard IO. Save that. Uh, and so now once that's saved, I can run over here, tap, press enter a few times, uh, I can run this Python program from this terminal here. And this is a real terminal, so it will actually uh, run, it'll actually, uh, standard IO will actually be uh, run in this terminal, okay. So this is test standard IO, and it should just print hello world. Um, so once you get that working, um, you're all set uh, and ready to program in Python um, using the uh, textbook. And that's the end of this video.